So I'm gonna start recording. The Zoom is already recording. I'll try to remember to, to post that as well. Okay, so you've cut your wax down on the bandsaw at this point, and now you're wanting to use um, other materials to start working with the wax. Remember that you always have your jeweler's saw as a way to continue working with the wax. I will say that um, there is some truth, like if you follow any jewelry people online and they are talking about um, kind of cross-contamination of, of wax with metal i mean it, to me sometimes it doesn't really make sense because when you're you run you can run your blade through that burr life which is essentially wax right um but if you're like cutting a lot of metal and wax with your jeweler saw you might want to dedicate blades to one or the other um i'll leave that up to you what I will say, though, is that uh, with certain kinds of the Dremel bits, I want clear separation of church and state, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so you'll notice that there are three of these boxes in the door behind Sonia. Um, and these are quite expensive carving bits. And it says on the box, and maybe I should make it bigger and bolder, it says metal only. So this is for, for chasing metal, the, you know, bronze, silver, whatever. What is chasing? Cleaning up, finishing. Okay. Yeah, so kind of getting rid of like the excess material or the flaws. Um, so just please read the box before using these bits on any media. So I just wanted to pull these out. There are three of them that I would like to be metal only. So this is off limits for wax work, but notice that on this one, I say wax is okay. <laughs> okay. So Does these- Does that mean that you cannot use that on metal or other You things? can, Okay. you can, you can use them on wood, you can use them on metal, but you can also use these on wax. And I'm, I'm just saying that because these are, um, they're older, they're yeah. a little bit junkier, and What's so I don't care. What's the wax doing to the bits that make it less good for metal? It can fill them, Okay. right? So all of these bits have grooves in it which allow them to do the carving that you're trying to do. And if you're using them on soft media like wax, you can fill those little grooves up with wax. And then if you go to use that on say silver or bronze, and then you go to apply your patina, sometimes that wax can inhib inhibit the patina taking to the metal. Oh, so the wax can then get on the thing. Yes, yeah. And so you're not always necessarily, like if it's, if it's a bronze sculpture, you're not going to throw it in the pickle pot the way that you would right. jewelry, which would clean, normally that the pickle will oh. clean the metal, right? Huh. But you just, so it's just, it's just a way to like, you know, set yourself up for the best results, right? So if you're keeping your tools separate for different purposes, um, it's just a way to kind of keep it, keep it clean. If we have our own or for other uses, uh, you mentioned that like, you can clean the sandpaper with like the brass bristle brushes. Mm -hmm. um, can't you do the same for the Dremel, or is it too tiny of a piece? Some of the bits are really microscopic. Yes, in theory, yes, you can. Um, but it might be in practice, you might not get like all of the wax out of the little itty bitty grooves. And melting it would be the same thing, it would still leave a residue. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, these you can, we do routinely melt wax out of the classroom tools, um, but I've, I haven't yet done that with these little guys. So actually, I'll, I'll just pass this box around so that you can see how teeny tiny the, the grit on those tools are. 
is our. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. This is this is why I need like my my moments of peace in the morning when I get here because I'm like, okay, how many things do I need to pull out of the cabinet um, for what I'm going to show you? And I forgot to get a bench pin. So, Tracy, do you mind grabbing me a bench pin? And then Sonali, can I ask you to grab me a C clamp from the bottom of the gray cabinet? Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so uh, you will want some kind of work surface. It doesn't have to be the bench pin, but I find that it's pretty handy surface to work on. And you'll see that I have a bunch of other tools out. So I think depending on what you want to accomplish, you'll just kind of know that you're gonna bounce back and forth between a lot of tools. Like I have sandpaper, I have a soldering iron, I have my jeweler's saw, um, I have my propane torch, I've got my nice carving tools. I've got my kind of junky um, classroom carving tools. Those are the, these are the ones that you'll find in the caddy, in the alcove, uh, around the corner. Um, I have these wax carving tools. They kind of look like um, X-Acto blades with slightly different profiles. These are all of these things except for the, the uh, cotton twine bound tools. All of these are in those drawers over there. Um, I also have this kind of a carving tool, which if you've ever taken a printmaking class and you've carved like linoleum block or wood block, these should look kind of familiar. So these have various blades that fit into this handle. What is that called? Is it's just a name for carving, really? carving set. I thought some of those look like wood. Mm -hmm. same, stuff? same thing. Mm -hmm. Now can I use both though? Because the wood has some wood. Um, you, you can, I mean, I don't, um, I don't think the, the wax okay. isn't gonna hurt these blades. Okay. Uh, the cotton bound, was that was for heat? These we use, yeah, when we, you can heat these tools. Um, if you have your own set of the Zyme tools, you can also heat these. What I'm gonna ask you not to heat are the X-Acto blade ones or these ones. This is the, the set of tools that I said is stupidly expensive. Like these, the set was like, $60 or something. So please, I know I know it's a high quality steel and that's part of the reason why it's so expensive, but please do not heat these tools. Okay. So these are okay to heat and if you, any tools that you have um, of your own are okay to heat as so well. Don't go to the expensive ones, the ones? Wax carbon. Yeah, the oh, ones that look like exacto exact knives. Would you recommend us just not to heat exacto knives in general? just for that type no of just just for these because okay. these are very nuanced mm -hmm. blades um exacto knife blades those are cheap yeah. right and honestly like it's i have all of these different <laughs> wax carving tools but i find myself coming back to the exacto blade a lot so i you don't need to use all of these tools they are just options for you if you're curious about them. Um, the other, so some things from your materials list that I said, you know, you 
like the first week of school, I was like, you don't need all of these things, but now you want to start ordering some other things. Um, these two little guys, these are for, made by Dremel, or you'll find, you know, similar type of um, bits online, but it's basically a little sandpaper drum. There's the they seem to come in two diameters, this kind of fatter one that's about a half an inch in diameter, and then this one that's maybe like a quarter of an inch in diameter. Uh, these will be helpful to you in carving wax, but also when you're, at, you know, after your piece is cast and you're doing some chasing of your, of your silver or bronze, like these are very cheap, but also indispensable. They're very handy, so please order some for yourself. I, there are a couple that float around in the classroom. I have my personal stash, but they are the thing that tends to get lost a lot. So the more the better. Would the wax gum itself pretty Yeah, but you know, then you just, you, you, I literally bought, um, on Amazon, like a bag of like, you know, 200 sleeves for, yeah, that is a, a cheaper thing. Could you add a couple more links to the like original, like what we need to get if you have ideas of like other places to get them? And you think they're just fine no matter like what type? Oh yeah, these, these, I don't think that there's like a quality control issue with okay. those. Yeah. What about the wax pen that you had us, that you had on the list? So that's just for welding, but yes, you do want to also buy this at this point. Um, so if you have not purchased your wax welding pen, you want to do that because this is what allows us to mount onto the flask base, okay? so. This is a 3D printed wax. This is not like something that you will necessarily carve, although you could but have that, that ambition to carve something like this. Um, but after you're completely done carving your wax object, when I say on the instructions that you're going to sprue your wax object to the flask base, this is what it's going to look like. Would you also use the wax pen to add things yes. to your tiny piece? little like things that you else. need yeah. to weld? But if you don't have this tool, this makes this process much more difficult. So when you ask me, is it worth it to get this? I'm going to say yes a thousand times over because it will, um, it's necessary for the fine like welding work to, to wax the, to weld this to the base, but also as Sophia is just intimating that like if I'm going to work additively and um, adding more wax to let's say my ring blank um, to make it more sculptural, this is going to be really key to welding the two pieces together. Kind just of know the temperature of the solvent iron. And it's so precision point like. I'll, I'll pass this around, but look at this tip. It is just, it allows you to be so surgical with your welds and it'll be really clean and beautiful. So it's still unavailable on Amazon? There's a different one that I got on Auto Fry, I think it was, and it, it looks like a thread burner or something like that. It just, it just looks oh, a little different. Yeah, yeah, so that, that would be a, a good, um, Maybe, and maybe check around other sites oh, too. Easy, so Rio Grande. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sweet. Yeah, this is basically the same thing. So can I pass this around? Can I this go back was, for yeah. This dremel. How do you change it? Because I understand this one has a screw top, but this one, I, yeah, it's weird, and I don't love it. I, you know, the all of the dremel bits are. You can see it's like just a bunch of tiny, tiny little things, right? Um, and so where it might seem kind of onerous to like have to screw this in place, um, I have noticed that these newer 
sanding drum Dremel bits, uh, they do not have the screw. So what the screw does on this one is that as you tighten it, it expands the rubber drum and it holds the sleeve in place. This one, I'm not quite sure how it works. I don't know if it's just like... We just slide it on and off. Then. Yeah, it slides oh, okay. on and off. Oh, okay. But like... But the locking mechanism... There's no locking mechanism. Okay. I f have found that it doesn't travel a whole lot. Okay. I don't know why. Okay. Um, but yeah, this one, it literally, you just yeah. pull it off. Because the other ones I have used off. and I didn't tighten it and it flew right off yeah and then i was like where did it go like the whole thing i was like where is it you know <laughs> yeah so notice this one like because the screw has the yeah. screw that i'm referencing is right here at the very top it's tiny um and you can literally use like even one of your carving tools to like you know get it in there and tighten it but you're better served to use an actual screwdriver <laughs> um oh yeah i'm sorry did do you see how to change the one on without? The it just slides off. Oh, okay. okay yeah. Thanks. But this one, in order to get it off, once yeah. the, the it's spent, you're going to loosen that screw and slide it off. And then when you get a new one, slide it on and tighten the screw. Okay. Um, okay. So then the next, I, I'm going to show you how to set up, um, I call them Fordham's. That's just sort of, it's not really, it's a flexible shaft machine. Um, Cause this one is actually a Grizzly brand. So the setup takes a little while. Um, you'll want either one of the red stands you'll see over there on the, the far table, or you'll grab one of these contraptions, which MC made all of these. It's basically a C clamp and he's welded a little bit of tube on the side. So that gets mounted to your table. And then the stand slides in. Notice that there are two hooks. So we could potentially have two people sharing one of these stands. So. Um, one hangs on one side and then the other hangs on the other side. So then your machine hangs on these little hooks. You've got all these Velcro tabs to tie things up. So when, when we talk about the flexible shaft, this is the flexible shaft, right? This is the the part that allows you to kind of move the tool around quite easily. Um, this is the part that you're holding in your hand like a pen. Whereas if you've had a, a Dremel tool, you know that the body of the Dremel tends to be a lot fatter. And that's why I love these because it's like holding a, a fat Sharpie rather than this really big bulky thing. What's the um, manufacturer? Grizzly? This brand is Grizzly. There are all different kinds of brands. If you're going to buy your own, um, the Fordhams are the most expensive, but I think they're worth it because they've been around forever and I've never had an issue with a Fordham tool. So uh, the, the motor for the flexible shaft gets plugged into the pedal. The pedal gets plugged into your power source. And your pedal um, it works like a sewing machine or a pedal in your car. Yes. So once you step on that, this rotates and it allows you to carve things. Um, so how do you put bits in, change things out? You will want to look for one of these chuck keys, right? So it's either going to look like this configuration or this configuration. And the way that, it's just like a drill. Like if you look at the end of this, there are three points that kind of come together or move apart and allow you to put the drill bits in or the Dremel bits in. So these keys, the chuck keys, you'll notice 
that in the shaft of this tool, there's a tiny little hole. So this tiny little nipple fits in there and then the teeth line up, right? These gears, gear teeth line up and it allows you to open up the prongs and then you can slide in. I'm gonna show you the sanding drum and then you tighten it in the opposite direction, okay? So then, the sound of it is a little odd to me. Okay, so let's just say that I want to shape, um, leaking from this one so just keep that in mind we're, we're doing messy things now um, I want to shape this so that I want to just like get rid of some of the hard corners of my ring let's say so the bench pin is kind of a nice surface to work against it doesn't you know doesn't really matter where I'm setting up just whatever is ergonomic for me um, and I, my suggestion always with any new tool is to turn it on, turn it off, just see how it, how it works, the speed of it. This is just down on the bottom side of the ring, right? Um, I'm just kind of taking away those hard corners. Ooh, I just remembered. I didn't show you how to size the ring. Oh, is that, or did you notice that something's out of view? Yeah. Oh, that's not the same, Megan. That's not the same as, like, that's Zoom. <laughs> This is my, but someone can just look in my screen and see if I'm, if you're seeing everything. I don't want to, don't put my face no, I'm just, on it. It's like your, your hands are at the very top. Okay, my hands are, yeah, yeah. okay. That's, so. yeah, because I added but. the bench pin. Thank you. <laughs> I need a personal assistant. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> but I don't know if I've got the right... I don't think this is it. Oh, the string might be in the way. Oh, there we go. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. That's okay, so I was mentioning before that you'll need to size the, um, the, the ring blank, right? Right now, this is just fitting my pinky. That's, that's quite, the, quite the pinky ring. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's just say that I wanted to size it to fit, like, my ring finger or my middle finger. So this is the tool that you're going to use, which it looks like a ring mandrel, but it's got a blade on here. So just, it can be a little sharp, so don't like run your finger along it. Um, and you're just going to insert it into the ring blank. And you can, can you see how I'm starting to collect It's a, it's just like a ring sizing mandrel or I don't remember the, the exact name. So this is, this is the thing that people were using last year and splitting 
the wax. So if you feel, but I'm, I'm going really gently here. So notice the, the shavings that are coming away. They're really light. So if you, I can see why, if you put a lot of pressure on this tool, it's against the wax, it's just gonna bust it open. So pretend you're shaving cheese for like a really fancy restaurant. Still hard. <laughs> um, there's some theory to, and I'm not saying that there's not truth to this, but when, if you're looking up a lot of YouTube tutorials and things like that, people will talk about a shrinkage factor um, with casting metal. It is true that the metal, whatever metal, whether it's silver or bronze, um, there is a little bit of shrinkage. And so people have said like, oh, when you're, you know, carving jeweler's wax for a ring, like size it up one. one I will, size? I don't think Seems it's like true. Lot. I will tell you my own experience is that I barely noticed the difference between, you know, my, my wax version of my ring versus the cast version. So I would say size it so that it's just the tiniest bit roomy. I wouldn't even call it a half size. That's my. Do you know it's the size you keep trying? Yeah. Yeah. So, so see, it's now it's. For you and huh? If it's not, if it's meant for somebody else. Well, <laughs> then you have to, you have to measure their ring size and kind of go off that. But I would, I would say even then, you can compare it to the ring gauges that I have, and you can size it just a tiny bit bigger, but I wouldn't go too crazy. Like this is now pretty, like slides on and off my finger pretty easily. I would just leave it at that, right? I wouldn't make it too much bigger. Can you stretch it afterwards still? You can't, like once it's in silver, right? And then you try it on again and it's like a little bit tight, there's no reason why you can't take that same sanding drum or just even sand, you know, sandpaper wrapped around a dowel and just manually kind of sand down the, the metal version and, and open it up a little bit more. Yeah, okay. so you can do it after the fact. I saw another hand. It was the same question. Same question. If it's just a little too snug, can you like sand the inside to yeah. make it go better? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so. Um, so now it's fitting, right? I would, um, you know, continue sanding down the hard corners until this is as comfortable on your finger as, um, as you want it to be. I would not sand it down or carve away so much wax so that it's at its like final thickness at this point. And the reason for that is similar to any other sculpting process. Um, you want to be in the mindset of roughing the form first, right? So if I take this part of the wax down and now it's like super, super thin and very delicate, and I still need to put a lot of pressure on this wax, I'm going to risk breaking it. So wait, right? Do some of your carving before you um, get to that point. So I'm just gonna carve into the wax with, you know, the, this is my, um, you know, printmaking tool thing. I'm not, I'm not after any kind of pattern. I, I, I'm just showing you what the various tools do. So this, you do want to uh, keep your fingers out of the path of the blade. You are kind of doing like a scooping action when you're working 
with a tool like this uh, and you don't want to slip and stab your, your finger. Um, these have different profiles, so you might decide to change, like this one is more just kind of like a little cheese knife looking profile. So if I wanted to not make these little channels, so this is like, those of you who took sculpture with me, the, the V parting tool with the hand chisels is what that one looks like if you want to pass that around. Are you creating design or are you just whittling? I'm, I'm just whittling at this point oh. just to kind of shape things a little You're bit. Okay. But like if I wanted to be able to take off flat shavings, I'm going to switch to this kind of cheese knife. version. And when I'm doing this, I am using my bench pin so that I can put pressure and spread out that pressure. So when you all are coming back to me with like broken wax, um, sometimes um, I might be wondering like, okay, are you, are you putting pressure on this and it's like, it's not well supported. So just, just think that like, you know, you're kind, you're, you're being aggressive with a tool on delicate media. So you want to make sure that it's supported well as you're working with the tools. What's the question? Oh, sorry. sorry. I got confused on the steps. I thought, it, was it refine the band thickness first and then do the pattern, uh, but not refine it to the point where it's super thin final? I just, I just took away the hard edges, oh, okay. but I'm not, I'm not <coughs> skinning it down to its final okay. thinness until I've shaped lots of other parts of the ring. Okay, so I'm, I'll pass this around just so that you can look at it. Um, I'll switch to maybe, you know, these have all different kinds of profiles. So again, you're just gonna be using the profile. And a lot of this is guesswork until you actually pick up the tool and what, you know, figure out, okay, is it doing what I want it to do? That's nice. <laughs> um, and notice that, you know, when, when I can, I'm always like pushing the blade away from me. Ergonomically, that's, you've got nice control that way. Man, I will tell you, that is a really nice cut. <laughs> sounded like such a dork just then. <laughs> um, but, and this was one of, see, you just never know. This was a cheapy set on Amazon. So maybe take a picture of this as it goes around. But that is cutting through the wax really nicely. Yeah. Do you find that using this kind of tools are better than the, uh, the sanded drum, or is that like great just to get that first edge Um. Because this seems a little more careful. This is more careful work. I, th I feel like the sanding drum is good for roughing things. Uh, but, you know, I know that we've had this playful argument of like how to get things done the fastest and I just don't want to break it. So like, if yeah. sandpaper will break it. I don't no, no, no. But I'm, 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 I, I have my, uh, my shit eating grin because I'm thinking about Sonia and like, <laughs> you know, how do we get it done? Like, you know, the most efficiently, right? <laughs> We've had this conversation a lot, but you know, so you could do what I'm doing with the, the sanding drum with the, the flexible shaft but it can get away from you pretty quickly, right? 
And this could be putting undue <coughs> pressure on the wax as well. Whereas I feel like if you're using a hand tool, you're, you're a lot more in tune with how much pressure you're putting on the wax. Um, so I'm now going to say, highly recommend. <laughs> like this is, it's just like gliding through the wax so nicely. Um, and let's just see, like the really pricey, pricey tool. This I feel like it is, again, careful work, um, better dragging towards you with this particular, but that's also very nice and can allow you to um, be very specific. So this one has kind of like an X-Acto blade profile on it, and that might be something where you're like, pushing away rather than pulling towards. But yeah, this is like shaving a very, very fine Parmesan. <laughs> <laughs> so the Wolf tool, this is the, the pricey set. Um, okay, so let's maybe change out the bit. I'll put in one of these carving bits. And this might seem like the more appealing way to go because it is going to be faster. But again, you want to establish some level of control with the tool. It's, I don't I don't necessarily see it as much of an advantage like I don't I maybe it's because this doesn't have much tooth left in the bit but I don't think that this is going to be too much faster than the hand tools and I'm finding that I have to put kind of a lot of pressure on the wax so for this instance, I wouldn't necessarily recommend. Um, okay, so one other option for working is with the soldering iron. Um, so those of you who bought your soldering iron already, you, you can certainly use this. Um, Your soldering iron, as you find it in the package, is gonna have just like a pointed tip. If, if that works for you in terms of um, carving into the wax, great, but know that you can also pound out that tip. So you can use uh, one of the anvils and one of the crappy hammers, the ball peen hammers, and you can pound it flat to make more of like the spatula. So those of you who took last year's metal sculpture with me and we were um, using this to, to weld our <coughs> wax for gating, that should look familiar. But you might find that it's a nicer tip rather than the point for carving into the wax. <coughs> Is that what you did to that one? I'm sorry? Is that what you did to that one? Yeah, that one is, is pounded out. Um, I'm just going to move this so that it's out of the way. Because your other option to working with a soldering iron is also to work with a propane torch and heating tools and kind of carving that way as well. So, you know, when they were cracking last time, I yeah. thought uh, the soldering iron was actually too hot, and I thought it, it just had a candle. Mm hmm. Because otherwise, 
it may melt too fast. It may melt too fast. And that is, that is why I, um, if you all remember, I have a couple, uh, see, it's already smoking, right? Yeah. Um, so if, if you're going to work with the soldering iron, please, uh, take some of the butcher paper and put it down on the table. Right. But also, um, the dimmer dial that is, I think it's down in the cabinet, right? That if you plug your soldering iron into the dimmer switch, that will help control the heat. But some of you got like nicer soldering irons, like more like the wood burning, the, the pyrography. Um, those are tend to be, you can, you can control the heat settings on those. So there is a bit of a warning that comes with the soldering iron in that it's around, usually they're around 60 watts and we really want them more at like 15 to 20 to melt wax. So it's kind of a constant process of, um, you know, plugging and unplugging, right? Um, but yeah, it will kind of, melt the wax pretty quickly so this is you got to work with like a delicate hand here and just make sure that you're not it's it's pretty easy to take away a lot it seems like an aggressive way because kind of uh, shaping yeah and just know that like you know when when you're working when you're melting the wax like this bless you um you know sometimes like you melt it but then there's still that that bubble of wax that so you know it, it's not the greatest thing to like cut wax with because you cut into the surface and then the melted wax just kind of fills your cut line too so if you really want like a cut channel you're better off using like an exacto knife or one of these carving tools or your jeweler's saw Right, but if you want like a more organic surface on your wax, you know, the soldering iron could be a way to go. Right. How about so, the, the wax pen, which is lower temperature, we could potentially use it as well, right? Like uh, you, you could, it's really meant for welding the wax. Um, and my fear is that it's such a delicate tip that if you're kind of using it to carve that you might ruin it. But, you know, it's certainly possible. Um, okay, so one other, I just wanna put some paper down. One other way to you know, heat the wax and work with it that way is of course with your propane torch. So this is now hot, right? So just be careful when you're working with tools that heat up. Um, so I'm gonna work off the edge of my bench pin again and I'm just putting paper down so that I don't have to scrape up a bunch of wax to the, to the surface of the table. Um, anytime you're using a propane torch, please grab one of these little caddies too, just so that, you know, it makes it a lot harder for the propane tank to be knocked over if it's sitting in one of these. Um, so the way to work with the propane torch and tools, turn on the gas. You don't need a ton of flame, like that's more than enough. And just, again, remember, like just with the little but butane torches, you see flame here, but the heat is all the way out to here, right? So just remember that <laughs> if you're reaching for something, like don't reach in front of the flame because it the heat extends beyond the visible that we can see. So. Say that louder. Um, you could. It's it's more heat than you need. Okay. The little butane one, and these are cheaper. Okay. 
so it's, it's just kind of an efficient thing. So in order to use these, you're just gonna heat the tool in the flame and then take it to the wax and shape the wax. And then you have to heat it up again. You might wanna knock off some of the excess wax. What's that? If you're just using it. You, you can't, okay, so the, the difference, um, the, the other ways to heat these tools, you can use a candle. However, it's a very dirty flame. So just know that like, you're gonna get a lot of soot on the, on the tool and on your wax. Not that it doesn't, it's not gonna hurt anything, but it's, if you're working with propane or butane, it's just a cleaner, cleaner flame. Um, the other thing that people use a lot in jewelry is like a, an alcohol lamp, right? So I think I even have one floating around somewhere here, but um, it's, it's just like a little, it's like an old timey, you know, candle situation where it's like a, a glass jar a wick that goes into alcohol fuel and then you light that. Um, and so I think that you can find them on auto fry. Like that's another way to kind of work with a hot tool at home. Um, okay, the last thing that I want to show you, um, I mean, this is, this is not developed at all. I'm just kind of showing you the various tools. Oh, two other things. You can, good old fashioned sandpaper, right? Like you can literally just, you use it just with your hand, you can wrap it around another tool, but you can sand the surface. Again, make sure that the wax is supported because I am putting a fair amount of pressure on the wax here. So if I'm doing this off the edge, that's an excuse for the wax to break. But if it's fully supported, then it should be fine. What gets it the smoothest? So from, from sandpaper, and this is 100 grit, right? So that, that's obviously gonna leave texture on the surface. So you could continue going up in grit, right? So then go to 220, then go to 500 or 600 and 1,000. So the, the drawers directly behind Tracy, those are the finer grit. I, it goes all the way up to 7,000, which it barely feels like anything. Right? That's really just for on metal. But um, another thing that you can do with wax is using um, Scotch Brite pads, you know, the green scrubby ones, and just like a little bit of baby oil. And that kind of gets a, a smooth surface. If you want smoother beyond that, you can also use, I'm not joking, pantyhose right, and um, some sort of oil. It doesn't have to be baby oil, it can be vegetable oil. Let's see lots of people heading our way. Scotch Brite, it could be makes vegetable me oil nervous. too, right? <laughs> What's that? Scotch Brite, you could use any oil. Yeah, I mean, any of them you can really, but it just acts like a, like a lubricant, right? Have you right? tried like the magic sponge? I haven't, but that's, yeah, that could be a pasta, because that has a little bit of abrasive in it too, very, very light. So if you're go after that like super, super smooth, you're just gonna keep graduating up in number <coughs> with the sandpaper. You can also use um, the Scotch-Brite and, and other things. Are you two doing artful things or are you scrolling? I'm trying to figure out where to get the wax pens because I can't. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. the fry isn't out of stock. It's out of stock? Yeah, it's sold out. It's uh, it's out of stock on oh, auto It looks well. like a thread burner on, on Amazon. The thread burner might be the the way to go. Uh, I do the same thing. I don't know. I 
Well, it, it was well, suggested when I did the link the from her, so let me go. Yeah. Yeah. A thread burner is like a sewing thing. Mm. Can I use your thread burner? Oh, like, let's just, let's try just it. Let's see if it'll oh, actually first. work. Okay, so I'm I'm just gonna do a little for instance of why you might want to use this in the sculpting process. So this box this box of wax, these are the the sprue wax. Okay, so for when we want to mount our object onto the sprues. Are we finding it? Sprue, S-P-R-U-E. If you don't have it by uh, Thursday, I have enough of these to accommodate a handful of people. We can. Uh, no, I have. I have a few of these as well. Um, so this is what you're going to be using to mount your piece of jewelry on the flask base. So this is our sprue wax and it comes in full round or half round. Um, and you are basic, most of the time you're matching the diameter with the thickness of your object. The reason why I'm pulling it out right now though is that you can also use it for adding to your piece. So if you wanted to work with the sprue wax sculpturally, so let's just, Let's just see what that might be like, All right? So if I'm taking... So this is softer than the ring wax. Yeah. Yes. Even though they're both look, the same color. So I the can... color doesn't indicate much. Um, oh, they're not the same color. It's... Color is an indicator, but um, I don't know why I noticed that this the, stuff is blue. I noticed that the blue wax breaks away from so like I imagine if you're doing like a stone, like when I was doing the tea, like yeah. it just slid right out. This rather, one? Yeah, rather than, um, or just the ring wax, but the blue wax. Specifically the ring, it slid out because okay. I think it is just stiffer. So the ring yeah, is more brittle. The ring is more brittle. Than the, the ring, blue. yes, the ring. And when you're buying the jeweler's wax, I, there, there is a difference. I'm being honest with you, I don't remember what, what the order is in terms of hardnesses. But let's just say I wanted to have some relief lines on the surface of this and I, I don't want to carve it in, I want to add it. So then I might take a little bit of my sprue wax and weld it to the surface of my ring. So, oops, teeny tiny parts. <laughs> I'm not even gonna bother. <laughs> okay. So the way that this works is, you want me to get it? There's a. Uh, don't worry about it. Now. Um, this, you press the button, and I don't know if you can see it, but the the very tip lights up. It gets hot. And I literally just touch it to the wax and pull back and it's welded on. Wow. So can you do your entire piece out of these um, strings if you want something? I wouldn't strange? recommend it because it's so noodly, it's not going to hold the circle shape that a ring needs to be. Not for a ring. Oh, oh for like a, yeah. Yes, just be, be prepared that the wax is gonna move a lot though. So the, I know it seems like maybe the, the harder wax seems cumbersome to work with and it's brittle and it's hard and it's, you know, you have to work a lot, but the advantage is that just by handling it, you're not going to break it and misshape it, right? Whereas if you're working 100% with the sprue wax, you know, it's so easy to bend that... It's just a design thing. A design is, thing? I don't know how to describe it right now, but uh, something that is not like on block, but mm -hmm. 
So if I wanted to take a lot of these, right, and maybe, um, you know, they could like twist together, right? But even that, I mean, you, you, they break, they break very easily. So what I, honestly, what I would do if you're gonna work with the sprue wax and forego the jeweler's wax is I would just get hot tap water, put it in a cup, and just take the pieces of wax and put them in the hot water bath. And that will, it'll make them even softer, but it will make them less prone to break. Mm -hmm. So if I'm just like using these to kind of, like let's say I just want like a bunch of lines that are twisted together, I have to work really, really carefully not to break the sprues, right? But if I'm if I warm the wax in water, then I can move them a lot more easily without them breaking. I think this would be like a perfect example that you're talking about. Like yes. If you start like with uh, this one here. Yep. You just add the little wax. Yeah, but you, I mean, even then, for something like that, I would recommend having like the the base of it to be the harder wax and then you're just welding the little bits on. Yes. Uh, is screw wax what you would use to make a bag for a pendant? Yes. So that was a really good question. Would you be using the sprue wax to make a bale? And I would say yes, that would be the perfect reason to do that. Okay, so Other things that you can do, which, you know, I, I'd like to see what you come back with in terms of research to help guide you, but other things that you could potentially do, like if you wanted other sculptural aspects on your ring or other piece of jewelry, Let's say you have a little figurine at home, like a little animal figurine, right? And you wanted to like mount the head of that figurine onto a necklace pendant. We could take that figurine, press it into some clay and register the shape of that, heat up some wax and cast that into the clay. Right, so there are, there are other ways to, you know, primarily we're carving, but we can be creative in terms of like how we get all of our components. So I know I know a lot of you in here are like um, animal lovers, and like you know Tracy was making bears over the summer, and you know <laughs> things like that. So like if you if you wanted to. Uh, work from real life objects let me also say that that can be part of like your homework between now and Thursday like bring those things in so if you've got things at home that you wanted to um, to potentially use do that okay so I've, I've twisted these two sprue bits together I'm gonna weld those on and then pass it around. If you were gonna do like some kind of like object with negative space, would it be okay to drill the negative space out or would you carve it all out? Um, you can drill it out, but I would, I would advocate, you know, um, no, not necessarily, just, you know, just being very gentle, like using oh, the hand drill right, that everyone right, loves to hate. Right, right, right. Or, uh, yeah, I, that's what I was thinking, the hand drill, but, because, yeah, I mean, you could, you could, you could, I mean, you can use drill bits and mm -hmm. use the mini drill presses over there, um, and you can drill the wax but just remember that it's brittle and to go easy. Makes sense. Is that the, the thread 
This is the thread burner and it works exactly the same way. So good find, Kira. It was marketed to me as a wax pen. <laughs> so I found this one on Autofire, but I don't think it's available right now, but it looks like the same thing, like the exact same thing, just it wouldn't have the same words, is a thread burner, like for sewing. I mean, yes, this one does say wax pen on it. Okay, so I'll pass this around too so that you can look at that. But just know that those welds are delicate, right? So, you know, just if you're really aggressive with handling the wax after you do the welds, they can come undone. But it's it's just a, you're, use, you're learning new materials and new tools. So just kind of be patient with yourself in terms of um, handling it. Patricia, you had a? Yeah, what if you wanted to put like a little crystal That's, <laughs> what's the difference? <laughs> because it's, uh, maybe it's an English thing. I, I'm not, um, I ask, ask what, me, what, ask what's me. The difference, sorry, what's the difference between welding and sewing? There isn't much difference and that's a very good question. Um, so, so Tali's question, what's the difference between welding and soldering? So, it's, it's essentially, they're synonyms, that they're, they're very close. Like the, both mean that you're joining two pieces together. Um, we tend to use the word solder when we're using silver solder to join pieces, or like your plumber comes to your house and he's using solder to like, you know, weld your pipes back into place. Um, welding, we're usually talking about like welding steel or welding uh, aluminum uh, or welding wax. And it's, it's really, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not fair when English is our second language and like it, 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 they do essentially mean the same thing and it's sometimes it's just the different applications for the different purposes. Um, Patricia, your question about setting stones. Um, you, yeah, it's, setting stones is really like a whole other level of jewelry making and I'd like to say that you might be able to glue things in, but it's gonna be really not the best. Not the best. Um, so you remember Casey, short curly blonde hair Casey, um, when she took this class years ago, she did a lot of research on you. There are some stones that you can cast into a ring like you can set the stone in the wax invest the whole thing melt out the wax cast in the silver and the stone is set that way however um i was i <laughs> I was, I was the skeptic when she did it because I was like, I don't know how the stone is going to survive that thermal shock, right? Because you're, you're melting out the wax at a very high temperature and then you're casting in metal at a very high temperature. I don't, so it, it worked. Like she bought, um, I think they were amethyst. And she made like a, it was like a snake head ring and set the amethyst in the wax and did the whole thing. However, the weird phenomenon that happened is that when we uh, rinsed the investment away, her purple amethyst had gotten bleached in the process. So I, if you're interested in doing stones in this process, I would, I'm gonna, you're gonna have to just do a lot of your own research to see what is the best stone to use because 
the, her whole process worked and it looked great. It's just that instead of having purple eyes, the snake had white eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Could it have been the heat? Yeah. I mean, that's my guess. Best. Like, I don't know. I just don't know, like, which stones are best suited for that process of using investment and doing it that way. Push it in, take it out, and then glue it back in. What glue are you going to use that's going to survive, like, daily use? Like, I just, I don't know of any kind of adhesive that's not going to be super messy and visible, but also strong enough to withstand that kind of daily use. Like, when you're looking at, like, your, you know, if anyone in here is wearing, like, a diamond ring or something like that, all of that is set by, like, the prongs, kind of just hold it in place yeah. right sure. or what they're doing um like like a i think it's called a pave setting like where they're but they're actually like pushing the metal over the edge of the stone right so it's it is not as far as i know it is not a, any kind of glue that is holding the stones in place if anybody is really curious about what gemstones you can use like Personally, I would recommend glass, um, just because it has, I think, a really high heat capacity. Mm -hmm. But if you need to look up what is appropriate, look up bleaching gemstones or gemstone treatments, and there's going to be a whole list of different types of gemstone, like if it's really porous that has other effects, or um, what effects to maybe what you want to do or avoid. Okay. What temperatures are we going to be melting the silver to? Silver melts at 960 centigrade, which is around 1600 Fahrenheit. Uh, if we have our own like cabochons and bezel wire and um, sheet metal, would you be able, like on like after class or something like yes. that? Yes. Yes. All right. Any other questions about? beginning this process. Okay. Great. I will stop the recording.